Welcome back friends. Welcome to another lecture on the teacher on demand series. This lecture is going to be on the clearance test. This lecture has been requested by one of my followers and I made it specifically for him. In case you have any requests in any of uh, request for lectures, you are most welcome to email me and I shall make the presentation for you. Right. Let's get down to clearance test. The definition of clearance test is it is the volume of plasma completely cleared of a substance in a unit interval of time. Volume of plasma ML completely cleared of a substance in a unit interval of time. Let us say a minute. So the units of a clearance test is ML per minute. Once again the definition of clearance test is the volume of plasma completely cleared of a substance in a unit interval of time. It is a measure of the GFR or the glomerular filtration rate. That is the amount of blood that is being filtered by the glomerulus of the kidney in one minute. Now what do I mean by that definition? Let us say that we've collected urine and we found a substance X in the urine to be of 10 milligrams. Let us say that we have collected the urine for one minute. So there is 10 milligrams of that substance X in the urine. Where did this substance come from? This came from the blood because urine is an ultrafiltrate of the blood. Now if we find that the concentration of the substance X in the blood is 2 milligram per minute or uh, 2 milligram per ml, then theoretically 5 ml of the blood would have to be completely cleared of that substance X to produce 10 milligrams in the urine. That is, if 10 milligrams has come in the blood, uh, in the urine, and the concentration of the sample of the substance X in the blood is 2 milligram per ml, then theoretically 5 ml of the blood would have been completely cleared of the substance X in that unit interval of time which is 1 minute. This is what is called clearance test ml per minute that will be 5 ml per minute now why do we need to do a clearance studies well when we do the basic test for assessing the renal function and there's a video of this in uh, one of my videos of this urea creatinine and urine routine examination are the most common tests done for evaluating the kidney function but there may be a long time before which these tests become abnormal. That is, the kidney is getting damaged, the kidney's function is becoming low, but it will take a long time for the urea or the creatinines to increase. And by the time they increase, substantial or a significant amount of kidney damage has occurred. So, we need a marker that will rise early and tell us about the kidney damage at a stage when we can treat it. There's no point telling me that the kidney has got damage and I can't do about it. We need a marker which will increase early enough to tell me that the kidney is getting damaged and if I do some treatment right now, I can protect the kidney. Clearance studies is one such test. Now, what do we need to know about a clearance test? We need to know that what are the substances that can be used for the clearance studies. We need to know how the studies is done. And we also need to know about something new which is called the EGFR. I will cover all these in the lecture. Right. Now what are the substances that can be used? When I use a substance for doing a clearance study, I need to be sure the substance fulfills the following criteria. One, it should be filtered by the glomerulus. Proteins do not get filtered by the glomerulus so there's no point in doing a clearance test using proteins. Second, after the substance has been filtered from the glomerulus, there should be no reabsorption or secretion of the substance. We know that a lot of substances after getting filtered get absorbed, like glucose. It gets filtered but everything gets absorbed. But because glucose is getting absorbed, glucose is not a good substance for doing clearance studies. For a substance to do a clearance studies, it should get filtered and after filtering, it should just come out in the urine and either should get reabsorbed nor secreted. This is the most important characteristic of a substance for clearance tests. Second, 
the level of the substance in the blood should be constant throughout the day there should no there should be no fluctuating rise or fall of the substances third it should be used easy to estimate both in the urine and in the serum now what are the common substances used substances can be endogenous that is which is being produced by the body and which can be used or exogenous where we inject the substance into the body and then see how much is being excreted the best substance of endogenous marker is creatinine creatinine clearance is one of the best tests for evaluating renal function why because creatinine is routinely being produced by the body the level of creatinine in the blood remains constant throughout the day and it is once it is excreted or filtered from the glomerulus it is not reabsorbed inulin is the best marker for uh, clearance studies because this exactly follows all the characteristics we required but this is a foreign substance which we have to inject into the body urea was initially used for clearance studies but some amount of urea gets reabsorbed in the distal in the loop of henle hence it is not a good test and nowadays we don't do urea clearance as i said inulin is the best creatinine is an endogenous substance so we are using it quite often but there is one problem with creatinine that a little bit of creatinine gets secreted in the distal convoluted tubule hence the values are not as good as inulin gold standard for clearance test inulin best method to do clearance test in a routine day to day setting is creatinine clearance the difference being that a little bit of creatinine gets secreted in the distal convoluted tubules right how do we do the test we need a timed urine sample usually a 24 hours urine sample is collected now how do we advise the patient we tell the patient that at 8 o'clock void out whatever urine is present and discard it after that note the time and then start collecting the sample all the samples of urine throughout the day should be collected we use a preservative to prevent bacterial contamination next day at 8 o'clock or the time at which the study was started the person is expected to void whatever urine is present that is discard the first sample start collecting all the samples for the next 24 hours and then next day at the same time when the test was started whatever urine is there pass that and collect it somewhere in between collect a blood sample for testing also if creatinine clearance is the test being done then this test can, the blood sample will, can be collected any time because the creatinine level stays constant throughout the day so what do i have i have a 24 hour urine sample okay and i have a blood sample now the first important thing is we have to collect how we have to measure how much quantity of urine which has been collected and this has to be expressed to the nearest ml it is not like half a pepsi bottle this is 2 liters uh, something is less so we say it is 100 uh, 1 uh, 1700 ml we have to actually measure it in a measuring cylinder and note the volume of urine collected in 24 hours next we use it in the formula the formula for clearance is u into r by b where u is the concentration of the substance in the urine b is the concentration of the substance in the blood and r is the rate of urine formation some of the books will say u into v by b where v they uh, lead to give a confusion meaning volume we want the rate of urine formation that is the volume of urine which you have collected in ml over 24 hours expressed in minutes so 24 hours into 60 minutes per hour so the volume of urine collected divided by 24 into 60 will give us the rate of urine formation the rate of urine formation will be expressed as ml per minute and the concentration of the substance in the urine and the blood should be expressed in the same units like milligrams per deciliter then we use the formula u into r by b where u is the concentration of the urine r is the rate of urine formation 
and B is the concentration of the substance in the blood. The normal range of creatine of clearance, we said inulin is the best clearance. It measures the GFR very well, which is approximately 125 ml per minute. Creatinine clearance is what we normally use, and the approximate creatinine clearance is about 100 to 110 ml per minute. Now you can see that there is a difference between inulin clearance and creatinine clearance, and this difference is because a small amount of creatinine is secreted in the distal convoluted tubules. Now urea clearance test is not being done. Why? Because we said that urea gets absorbed in the distal in the loop of Henle. But if we are doing urea clearance, there are two types of urea clearance. That is the normal clearance and the standard clearance. When the rate of urine formation is greater than 2 ml per minute, we use the standard clearance, which is the same formula U into V by B. When the rate of urine formation is less than 2 ml per minute, we used a standard clearance formula, which is U into root of R by B. This test is no longer being done, so we don't need to know much about it. You can understand that if we do a clearance studies, it involves collection of 24 hours of urine and it, if we have to do so much of tests a day, my laboratory will be nothing but a Sulab Sochale. So based on data obtained over years of research, people have come out with a mathematical formula using some mathematics and a formula to estimate the glomerular filtration rate. This is called the EGFR estimated glomerular filtration rate there is a complex formula but if we put the values of serum creatinine age sex of the patient and then press a calculate button we get the EGFR these formulas are available online we just have to feed the values press the calculate and we get the result which is the estimated GFR now there are many such formulas you have MRDR formula, you have a crockford gold formula, you have a CKD EPI formula and the formulas are given here. We don't really need to remember all these formulas. It is available online. You just have to ask for the formula, feed the values and the EGFR comes. So nowadays, instead of doing and this requires only one sample of serum. We are not even talking about the urine concentration. Just based on the serum concentration, we can get an estimated GFR. Nowadays, G uh, GFR is calculated using the eGFR formula and very rarely do we resort or do we try to do a complete clearance test. Thank you very much for your patient his, uh, listening. Please feel free to contact me at my email IDs and give me your valuable feedbacks and suggestions about the lecture. In case you have a request for any lecture on any topic pertaining to laboratory medicine, I will be very happy to help you. I'd also like to mention here that all the pictures shown in this lectures have been downloaded from in the internet and I thank the people who have uploaded these pictures. Thank you. Jai Hind.